So this morning's video is about casting art, not about mini houses or boats or any of the, my usual stuff. It's about casting art. This goes on pretty much all the time behind the scenes. Um, and I want to talk about a new product we started using. It's called Matrix. Let's a new, we've never used this before. Matrix Drive. Um, it's a simple two-part component, and so far, we've cast one, two, three, four, five, six fairly large reliefs with it, and I've uh, been super happy with it. So I thought I'd make a video kind of explaining the properties of this product. So when Debbie first started casting these reliefs, I guess 25 years ago, she started using hydrostone. It's very inexpensive. She can get it locally. Um, it's kind of like plaster of Paris, but it's quite a bit harder. Um, at some point, we switched to hydrostone Super X, which is a much better product. It's way harder. Um, it <clears throat> it takes a better finish. This stuff tends to dry kind of blotchy. It takes a better finish. Um, this stuff used to come in five gallon buckets. This was the bucket it used to come in, but then they switched to the bag in a box, which is really a pain. Um, pretty much once you open it and lay it on the floor, you can't move it and you can't reseal it. It's uh, disappointing that they went away from the buckets, but they did. And then her reliefs got bigger. This Hydrostone Super X is super heavy. Her reliefs got bigger. It got harder to cast in that. It's harder to ship these <clears throat> big Hydrostone Super X. Hydrostone Super X is very, very hard. You cannot scratch it with your fingernail, but you can break it. It's kind of brittle. Let's see. Yeah, so this is Super X. And it's heavy and it's brittle. So that's a disadvantage with a big piece. You really, it's really... Uh, not practical at all to cast a bigger piece than this right here in the Super X. So we went online and we found out about a product called 4-Ton MG. And it's more of a weatherproof, weather-resistant product. Uh, it's a fiberglass reinforced product. This is 4-Ton MG. It's pretty good stuff. And we use it for a lot of big reliefs, like the ones in the church. I think we have a video on making those. They're... Uh, I don't know, three foot by seven foot. Um, pretty good product, but it does have some disadvantages. One, it's a four part mix. So there's always a chance that you're gonna make the ratios wrong. Um, two, it comes in a freaking box, not a bucket. So, <clears throat> or parts of it come in a box. So this, you know, it sounds like not that big a deal, but when you're dealing with a bunch of components, a bunch of chemicals, and you got open boxes on the floor, just it's not, not a good thing. We had problems a couple of times with the four ton MG with, with our reliefs warping, like you take them out of the mold and they wouldn't be the same shape as the mold. And we tried to get some direction on that from the distributor and whoever, and we got like blank, blank information. Nobody knew any information, which is really disappointing when you sell a product and it's got a uh, an issue so we don't know whether we were putting up different layers in too quickly too slowly too thick too whatever nobody would give us information that kind of put a sour taste in our mouth about the four ton and one more thing about the four ton is it comes with a hardener it's a little bag of powder and like 30 percent of the time when we get a shipment of these little bags they'd be hard i mean like unusable now they were always replaced, but you shouldn't have to go through that. So um, we decided to switch. We started buying this Matrix Drive. I think that's how you would say it. Um, it's similar to the four ton, but you only mix it with water. So less chance of messing something up. You still put two face coats and you still put fiberglass, chopped fiberglass in it for reinforcing. Um, it costs more. But for our scale, it's not an issue. If you were casting like big architectural products and using pallet loads of this stuff at a time, it probably is a consideration. 
But if we do a project and the materials cost $2,000 instead of $1,900, it's really not that big a deal. So we're using the matrix. We're gonna do a little video here on how to, how to do it or how we're doing, doing it. And uh, maybe you'll learn something or maybe you'll see something we're doing wrong and you can let us know. But we're gonna uh, record the casting of this mold which we just pulled out of the shed, still got the shrink wrap on it to keep the roach dookie out of it. And we'll put this one to the side and get it out the way so we'll have a good working surface. Now this material mixes three to one, three parts of the powder to one part liquid. And how much to mix for each coat is kind of, uh, comes from experience. Debbie's pretty good at that. So uh, she's got that down pat, but if you've never mixed it before, it's a little bit of a guessing game. She'll get it ready. Um, she'll get the three parts of powder in one cup and then the one part of water in another cup, and then we'll mix them up. So this mixes powder to water, and they recommend mixing as you pour. So with this little amount we're mixing, it probably doesn't make any difference. But the sculpture lady follows instructions, no matter what. It mixes just so easy. It, it just loves the water. It just mixes in just a matter of seconds. So um, it's a pleasure mixing this stuff. Mix it more, it'll set faster. Yeah. That's good. So it's good, no more than two minutes. We did spray this with a spray release agent. Um, this material calls for a release agent and the Fortin MG does not. Um, I don't know that it's necessary, but we sprayed it anyway. And I don't have any video of that. So my principal job in this endeavor is to keep the buckets clean before they get hard and to carry the big five gallon buckets around. Other than that, I'm almost not needed, or I'm not needed, because she does it by herself sometimes. It's just easier if you have somebody to keep up with washing the buckets and washing. I gotta go make wash that mixer before it gets hard. So this is the face coat. This is the most important coat because it's gonna pick up all the details from the rubber mold. So you don't want any bubbles. You don't want any cavities, you don't want any dirt. Just spread it around nice and neat. So when you're messing with any of these plaster products and you're cleaning buckets and brushes, etc., the only way to keep the P-trap from getting clogged up is to not have one. We just dump on the ground. And about once a year, I get out here with them all and break it up. It's incredibly hard. And I throw it in the garbage. So we're outside, so it's all, it's all good stuff get a lot of uh, where it doesn't want to stick. But then oh, the release agent? Yeah. Okay. I probably should have waited a little longer. All right, so we started this, poured this out at eight o'clock and Debbie's gonna sit here with the brush and try to keep pulling it up on the vertical surfaces because it's real rainy right now, but it will thicken in a little bit. And nothing hard about it, but it's a little bit tedious. You can't, you can't leave it. You gotta keep pulling it up. So this will be the first coat. The second coat will be very similar to this, but it'll dry a little quicker because it dries quicker on itself than it does on the um, rubber. polyurethane rubber mold. 23 minutes later, it is just starting to get thicker where she can pull it up on the sides and it stays a little more. Keep doing this and at some point, it'll get a lot thicker, but if you try to pull it up on the side, you're gonna pull it away from the mold from where you're pulling from, and you definitely don't want to do that. So try to get as much as we can on the vertical surfaces. And at some point we just say, good and call it, and then get away from it and let it set. So 30 minutes after we first poured it in there, calling it quits, because it's starting to get tacky and we don't want to pull it off the surface, pulling it up the side. So I'm gonna let it sit for a little while and, and set, and then we'll mix another batch, do the same thing. 
55 minutes after we mix the first batch, it is hard enough to put a second coat on. You want it, you want it totally cured because you want to get a chemical bond between the two layers. Still got to be kind of careful. It's a little bit wet. So let's mix up another batch. This is the second batch, the first batch. Um, Debbie painted on it for about 30 minutes and then uh, got away from it for about 15 minutes and let it harden up. If you get on second coat too fast, you risk the brush pulling the first coat from the mold and then that'd be terrible. So you gotta let it um, set um, probably just knowing basic chemistry. The sooner you can get on it, the better the two layers will adhere. But we've never had a problem with 4-ton MG um, delaminating, even you know making patches the next day or a few days later. It's always stuck. This stuff seems to be very similar to the 4-ton. But, uh, so just let it get stiff where uh, you're not going to disturb the first coat and we apply the second coat. How much are you mixing each time? Uh, 36 and 12. It's a total 48 ounce. Okay, 36 ounces of powder uh, and 12, 12 ounces, ounces of, of water. water by volume, not by weight. Right. Okay. And same procedure as the first coat, but it will set a little quicker. So uh, we mixed right at 9 a.m. We'll see how long it takes. I gotta go wash the bucket. Yeah, which is where I do it. Okay, it's been 30 minutes. And it's thickened up enough where we're gonna mix uh, a special brew with this magic stuff right here that makes it get real thick. Because there's always the problem of it running down off the edges and not being thick enough. Same proportions here. Three to one. Mm-hmm. a few more little uh i guess because it's we're not mixing with the uh, electric mixer a little lumpy. see a little bit a few lumps in this mix but we're going to put this thickener matrix duo matrix thickener and this is another this. advantage we didn't have this with the uh four ton mg and this is huge you see that she just put like i don't know a handful of drops in there and mix it up you mix and mix and mix and suddenly it gets like from being a liquid to a semi liquid or a semi solid more like uh, peanut butter so you can trowel it it's not quite the thickness i want so i'm gonna put another drop just a drop So I'm going to go around the edge, dab a little bit every few inches, then I'm going to go back with the brush and make that a continuous line. Do you mean to get a brush or are you okay? Yeah, I'll show you how I'm doing it. Let's see. Here we go. I'm going to brush and we're just going to build up that, that vertical surface. So we don't have it chip. So that's what I'm going to do around the whole perimeter. And, and she'll usually and, do like yeah. these little spots little too because they'll, be, the edge they'll be real thin. Anywhere where it's going to be a thin cast. And this takes the same amount of time to cure or quicker? Uh, same, about the same. Another 30 minutes or so? Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Okay, so we just mixed up the third batch, the same amount each time. And this Can batch brush, gets the, um, gets the fiber, the fiberglass fibers in it for strength. Chop. Chop, chop glass. And how much to put in there is just from her experience and feel. If you put too much, it doesn't wet out. And it's, makes it, it takes a while to, um, 
clean up the back of the relief. If you don't put enough, you're not getting your, your bang for your buck. Usually like two handfuls, a little more. And then you have to get good wet out, so you mix it in real well. You don't want big dry clumps. No. Okay, while you're mixing, I'll go wash that bucket. So it is dumped out and smoothed by hand. You get a uniform thickness. And you get it in all the, uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to push the glass in some of these depressions. So you just conscientiously do that. And you move slow because if you get a glass fiber under your fingernail, it really, really hurts. Yeah, it's no fun. And then you want to get the camera and show how we do the bar, except the. Yeah, it's all we're going mm -hmm. right now. Oh, okay. So the metal frame has nothing to do with uh, matrix drive. This is a frame I made to set these embeds and these embeds are threaded. So um, we'll supply the relief and studs like this. So when it gets to, this is going to Detroit. When it gets to Detroit, the guys can thread in the embeds and drill holes in concrete and set this in epoxy. And it will, um, it will never come out in one piece if they want to change their mind, they're going to have to break them to get them off because these embeds are not going to come out and the um, <clears throat> studs in concrete are not going to come out. So so this frame is just to hold everything straight and, and still and vertical. And we'll go with one more batch after this where we really tie in the uh, embeds, their T-nuts, to the uh, structure, the, to the back. So each one of these reliefs has taken four uh, 48 ounce mixes plus the little, uh, I don't know, cupful that she mixes with the thickener to do the edges. And then at the very end, after we remove the metal frame and the T-nuts are exposed, she'll usually, or they'll usually need a little bit of doctoring up. So she'll mix a, a, another cupful of, of the material with the fiberglass fibers and kind of just dab it around the bolts. And that'd be it as far as materials go. So at the end of the third batch, which is the first batch with the fiberglass, and it's um, the first where we set the steel frame that the aligning bracket to hold up the T-nuts. We screwed the um, studs down until the, the heads of the T-nuts kind of got into the, um, the wet matrix. And that way, now when we're doing the fourth coat, they're not wiggling around, they're not moving. You can, uh, you can kind of manhandle them a little bit and push this uh, fiber reinforced material all around them, try to get good embedment. You don't have to worry about it moving because they're not going to move.
up a little bit more like a half a cup to make sure there was enough around all the bolts so they wouldn't come out because that's what holds the thing to the wall came out already yeah because they're in there hard frame comes off and leaves the embeds and they are not coming out. Scraping off the jagged edge prior to demold. So it's 219 and we started at what time? Six? Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Sometimes it pops out. Sometimes it doesn't. We'll stand with that. Yeah. Let gravity help. Mm-hmm. You missed the one you said had the leg out. It's hard to get out. No. No. No, this isn't that one. Whoop. Okay. This head is really okay, wedged in there. I have to kind of work it out with my hands. We have to work at a little. I did a little slit in the rubber. It usually works well, and it did. There we go. Finished cast in matrix drive. D-R-Y-V-E. D-R-Y-V-E. Um, new product for us. We're happy with it so far. Now we'll have to flip it over and I'll have to grind the back. Whoop. Hold on. Okay, ready? Yeah. This is Simon of Cyrene, who was said in the scriptures to have helped Jesus carry his cross. He was sort of a conscript and he helped Jesus carry his cross. This is a little different composition because usually you see them both standing and I wanted to change it up a little bit. So and, and what is this and where are they going? This is station five of the Stations of the Cross and they are going to the Solanus Casey Center in Detroit, Michigan. First piece to go to Detroit, right? Well, one of 14. I mean, you don't have any other work in Detroit. No, right. I don't have any work in Detroit yet. All right, and we will wrap this heavy mold back up, put it in the mold shed, and bring out another. So we cast another one tomorrow. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you're considering using this product, I hope this was helpful. If you are familiar with it and you think we're doing something wrong, please let us know because uh, we're too old to learn, but sometimes we manage to learn something if we forget something else and make room for something new.